Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today, we're doing Tweety Bird. So the colors I used in this, there are only two. All of this is felt. And then a little bit of black for the lashes and then a little bit of hair that he's got on his head. So this orange is a Loops and Threads Impeccable. It's called Orange Crush. I'm using a red background so that it's noticeable, but hopefully it is. The yellow is Loops and Threads Lemon. So those are the only two colors other than this. I, this is just a two weight cotton that I use for eyelashes and stuff like that. I am using a 4.5 for this project and we're going to start with our orange color and we're going to build the feet first. They are built separately like this and then they're sewn on and then we, we make we use just a piece of yarn and we accentuate this so it's not hard at all. It's pretty easy peasy. This is sewn to this so that'll be separate from this. So easy peasy. We're going to start with a magic ring of eight single crochets. If you don't like the magic ring or you don't know how to do it, you can just do a chain two and then put everything into the first stitch. That's my eight single crochets. We're building this in amigurumi, so no slip stitching and no chaining, but you will need a stitch marker. Your first round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around for 16 stitches. Number one gets the marker, then the second stitch can go in that same space. Two single crochets in each stitch around for 16 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase. That's my one single crochet. And then the next stitch is going to get the increase of two single crochets in the same space. This will bring you up to 24 stitches. Your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in an increase. This will bring it up to 32 stitches. That's as far as we're going. So this is number one. That's number two. And then the next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So this is what you should have for the next five rows. I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these uh, 32 stitches and I will see you on the other side. So 
So that's my five rows. That's what you should have. So we're going to decrease a little bit. We're going to do a two single crochet decrease. This will bring it back down to 24 stitches. So that's number one. That's number two. And then a regular decrease would be in the full stitch, going in and grabbing a loop. Next stitch, go in, grab a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three. I'm going to do invisible decreases because they look so much better. And I'm going to go in and pick up the front loop. And then I'm going to pick up the next front loop. Then I'm going to yarn over, pull through that, yarn over, and finish the stitch. It leaves the back loops here so that you don't have any gapping and it's less noticeable, hence why it's called an invisible decrease. So two single crochet decrease all the way around. So for the next three rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. So that's my three rows. I'm going to start stuffing mine. Um, don't overstuff the toe because we have to do this and we need a little bit of softness in there to be able to shape it. So don't pack her down too badly. So we're going to do a one single crochet decrease. Let's bring it down to 16 stitches. That's number one. And then our decrease all the way around. In the next four rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 16 stitches. And then that'll be it. We can cinch it. So that's my four rows. This is what you should have. You can fasten off. You need a cinching tail. We're going to do this on the end. That's it. That's all you need. So finish stuffing it. making sure I'm stuffing my feet the same so when you make your second foot you are gonna have to make sure you stuff <laughs> your foot the same my second foot's made because I do videos but so I think mine's pretty full so we're gonna cinch this up so go into your front loop of the first stitch and pop around and go out the front loop of your second stitch. In and out, all the way around. So once you come all the way back around, you can pull. So to make this look a little bit neater, I'm going to now weave 
around the sensual. It just gives it a better look. And since it's kind of going to be noticeable, I'm going to come up here and make a knot across my cinch hole just in case it tries to pop open. Anyway, it's no real way of making this look decent. It just is what it is. So, fuzzies. This is our foot. And to make the little thing on top here, just need a piece of yarn. Oh, and I went back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So go up through your magic ring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Pop out between the seventh and eighth row. One of these needs to be left hanging out. And then go back down like a big whip stitch. Go back down that same hole. We're going to pull, and then we're going to do it again. So pull, and then we do it again to make it even tighter. Pull, oh, maybe not quite that tight. It is a bird, not a cow. <laughs> oh, I went too tight. Let me see if I can pull that out a bit. There we go. So. Just enough to make it look like this. I'm going to have to do mine again. There we go. So I'm just going to come over here and pop out. On the side. And with this guy, I'm going to pop out on the side. I'm going to tie this in a double knot just so that nothing happens to it. It stays kind of, you know, tight. doesn't open up or anything. And then I can weave this down. So just make sure these are coming up the same hole. So that that knot gets pulled in like that. Oops. There we go. So, um, we just need to make this top part and get that sewn on. So, we're going to start with orange, and you're going to make a magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around, giving you 12 stitches. So I'm just going to count to 12. For the next 11 rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. So if you have a stitch marker, this is a great time to use it. Or a stitch marker? A stitch counter! <laughs> I'm not using my stitch marker for 11 rows. I'm just going to use my stitch counter. 
This is one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. I will see you on the other side. So this is the end of my 11 rows. I'm going to go into my last stitch and I'm going to change to my yellow. So with my yellow, my next round is going to be done in the back loops and that's because I want to put this on after because it just makes everything look so much better. But if you don't care then you don't have to do the back loops but I am doing the back loops. It's just going to be one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. So. So now we've left all these front loops exposed so I can get back in that with my orange. So with my yellow, we're just, we're not increasing or anything. We're just going to do for the next three rows, we're going to do one single crochet with our yellow. So I'm just going to count to 36. So this is my 36th stitch. I'm going to go into the next stitch and fasten off. So you will need a sewing tail because we use this to sew to the body. Let's finish stuffing it. So before we sew it to our foot, let's get some orange. Make a slip knot. Let's find our first front loop at our jog here. And we're going to slip stitch to reattach, but well, we're going to slip stitch all the way around. If I can manage to, uh, there we go, manage to slip stitch. So you can just slip stitch each loop. It's just enough to put a an edge on this that Because that's what he has on him as a cartoon character, so... So when you come back around, you've got this jog thing going on. Find your first front loop. It should kind of look straight. We're going to slip stitch into that again. And then you can slip stitch into the next stitch. And fasten off. So you're going to have a funny looking piece here. But I kind of push that right down. There is a way to make it look better. 
when you do your weaving. So that's that. So now we take this and we mattress stitch it to this. So again, you need another piece of orange. So mattress stitch would be taking some foot. Don't pull this all the way through. Taking a bit of your foot and then taking a bit of your leg. So don't go down here, go up one row. Take a bit of your leg, take a bit of your foot. And that's what you're gonna do all the way around. So you don't have to pull tight right away, but just try to stay, stay in the same area. Now, when you've got a circle you gotta go in, it's difficult, but I mean up in this part try to stay in the same line type of deal so you can pull as you go or you can kind of leave yourself a little bit of room it might be better to pull as you go just so that you can gauge how you're doing with the positioning so give it a little bit of a pull when you first start you're gonna probably have to pull both these pieces because it'll want to I don't want to do some stuff. But if you already know how to mattress stitch, then you don't need me telling you. So it should look pretty seamless when you're done. I mean, you're, you've got the the yarn running to opposite directions. So I mean, you're you are gonna notice <laughs> you are gonna notice that it's not you know seamless. But I'm gonna pop out into a hole with both my pieces. So I can tie my knots. Uh, see where I went in is a little sus, so that's why I'm moving it. Because I didn't quite go in through a hole, but tie your double knots. Weave your knot inside. we go so go ahead and make your second piece get it all sewn up and sewn together and and then we can come back and start his body now this gets sewn to his body I don't crochet the body on to this guy so this will get crocheted or this will get just sewn on and um, so uh, when we come back after you do your second leg then we'll just do the arm it's it's so super duper quick and easy and then we'll move on to the body
So this arm starts with a magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. So I didn't want to increase by six. I only wanted to increase by three. So that's why I'm not starting with two single crochets in each stitch. So one single crochet and then your next stitch will get the increase of two single crochets in the same space. This will bring it up to nine stitches. And that is it for the next 19 rows. You're going to put one single crochet in each of these nine stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So this is the end of my 19 rows. I'm going to fasten off. You need a sewing tail and a cinching tail. So I'm going to finish stuffing mine and then I'm going to cinch the top closed. I want it to look nice on top so I'm just making sure I have stuffing all the way to the top. So we're going to cinch this close. So you're going to go in the front loop and out the front loop. So when you go down to weave, you don't really need to weave, but pop out on the side because that's where it's going to be sewn from is the side. So I'm going to put the pattern up and go ahead and I mean it's pretty easy peasy pattern to remember, but I'm going to put the pattern up and go ahead and make your second arm. Just make sure you stuff them to be the same size and I'll see you right back here. So let's start this body. The head and the body are built separate and the head is sewn on. So let's get this body started. So we're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. Your first round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch for a total of 12. Okay. 
Round two is going to be one single crochet and an increase. This brings you up to 18 stitches. That's one single crochet with your marker and then the next stitch will get the increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. This will bring it up to 24 stitches. The next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 30 stitches. That's number one with your marker. That's three single crochets and then your increase. And repeat. The next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 36 stitches. That's number one. That's my four single crochets and then your increase. Your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. And this will bring it up to 42 stitches. Your next round is going to be six single crochets and an increase and that's about as far as we're going with our increases. So this is what you should have. You should have 48 stitches. For the next 11 rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 48 stitches and I will see you on the other side. So that is my 11 rows. We're going to start decreasing slowly. So our first decrease is going to be six single crochets and a decrease. So bring it down to 42 stitches. That's number one. That's six single crochets. So you've got two decreases you can do. You can do a regular one. So you go into the full stitch, pull up a loop. Go into the second stitch, pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. But you get this gapping with it when you do it that way. So the invisible decrease is done in the front loops only. So pick up your first front loop, 
pop around and pick up your second front loop, yarn over, pull through those, yarn over and finish the stitch. It leaves these back loops back here so that you don't have any gapping, hence invisible. So choose whatever one you want to do. Either way, it's going to be six single crochets and a decrease. So your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 42 stitches. Your next decrease round is going to be five single crochets and a decrease. This will bring you down to 36 stitches. That's number one. That's five single crochets and then your decrease. And repeat. So your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 36 stitches. So your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. So bring you down to 30 stitches. So I should have 30 stitches. You're going to do one single crochet in each of these 30 stitches. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. Spring down to 24 stitches, that's number one. That's three single crochets and then your decrease. So you can start stuffing this. We're going to um, be done doing this soon. So for the next two rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. So that's my two rows. So this is what it should look like. A few more rows to go. Your next decrease is going to be two single crochets and a decrease and this brings you down to 18 stitches and that's as far as we decrease. So 
All right, so for the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. And that'll be it for the body. So that is it. You can fasten off. So it's your decision whether you want to sew the head gets sewn on. So you need to decide whether this will be your sewing tail or when you um, uh, cast off the head, it'll be the sewing tail. I'm using this as the sewing tail because when I, when I do the head, let me see if I can explain this in a normal way. When I cinch the head, the tail, I'll have to pop the tail out the side and I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to keep it already on the side of the body. Does that make sense? You know, it's hard to explain what I'm talking about. Some, sometimes I have off days and I can't find the right words. So hopefully you understand what I mean. So I'm using this as how I'm going to sew my head on. We are going to cinch it though. So finish filling it. So if you don't get it quite super duper full and it does wrinkle on top, it's not going to be noticeable because there's going to be a head sitting on it. So, but do try to kind of stuff it so it's, you know, full, full. So you're going to go in the front loop of the first stitch and out the front loop of the second stitch all the way around. So once you're all the way around, you can pull to close that up, pop across to make your knots. So that's what you should have. So I'm just going to pop out. I'm not really going to weave because I am sewing a head on, so... And that's your body. So next we'll do the head. So moving on to the head, we're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. First round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around, giving you 12 stitches. After the first stitch, that's where the marker goes. And then stitch number two can follow in that same space. Two single crochets in each space around. Your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase. That's one single crochet and then your next stitch will get the increase of two single crochets in the same space. Next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase, and this will bring it up to 24 stitches. Mm -hmm. 
Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. Next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. And this will bring you up to 36 stitches. Your last increase round is going to be five single crochets and an increase, and this brings you up to 42 stitches. So this is what you should have. For the next 10 rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 42 stitches, and I will see you on the other side. So that's my 10 rows, So what you should have. So we're going to decrease a little bit. We're going to do a 5 single crochet decrease. This will bring you down to 36 stitches. So you should have 36 stitches. For the next two rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each, each of these 36 stitches. So that is my two rows. We're going to increase a little bit. We're going to do a five single crochet increase. So your next increase row will be six single crochets and an increase. And this brings you up to 48 stitches. In case you're wondering what we're doing, we're just shaping the face. Tweety Bird has a weird shaped face. So it should look all wavy and funny like mine does, if you can see it. So you're on the right track. For the next three rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 48 stitches. So this is the end of my <coughs> three rows. So it's pretty funny shaped. I don't know if you can see it, 
better maybe when I hold it up like that. I mean, you can see your own, but to do a comparison to what it should look like. So now we're going to just start to decrease to close him up. So we're going to do four single crochets and a decrease. And this will bring you down to 40 stitches. That's four single crochets and then your decrease. Uh, you're probably wondering why we're not doing the six single crochet decrease and it's only because I wanted a smaller decrease. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. And this will bring you down to 32 stitches. So I think we should start to stuff it. I got a couple of rows to go. So you can kind of see the shape that we're doing now when you start stuffing this top part. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. This brings you down to 24 stitches. So your last round is going to be one single crochets and a decrease and this brings you down to 18 stitches and then we're going to cinch from there. So you can take your marker out and we're going to fasten off. We need, all depends on what you've done. So now my body has the sewing tail. But if your body doesn't, you're going to need a sewing tail. Uh, but definitely need a whip, st or a whip stitching, a <laughs> cinching tail. Because we're going to cinch. So now we stuff this part to stick out like this. So we need to stuff it so it does that. It's not the easiest thing to do and keep this indent, but it is doable. So, this is the shape that you need to have for it to look like Tweety Bird. So we're going to go in the front loop and out the front loop, just like we did before. It does not really matter if this is wrinkly on the bottom when you pull your cinch because um, you'll never notice it once it's sewn to your body. 
So I am just weaving around the cinch hole a little bit. Just to tighten it. This is what you should have. This is the head. So let's do the beak and the t then the tail, and then we can um, do the face. We'll sew everything on, do the face, and put everything together and finish building this guy. So we're going to start the beak with a magic ring of four single crochets. And this is to help make it pointy. The second row is also to help make it pointy, and that's going to be one single crochet and an increase. If we did two single crochets in each stitch like normal, it would be two rounded. So we're going to do it this way. So that's number one. Then your next stitch will get the increase. You're obviously only doing this twice because you only have four stitches. This brings you up to six stitches. So we can pull our middle here. Pull that, push that closed. And make a knot. Or you can sew it in just to make sure it doesn't pop open. We can pop that around. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. This will bring it up to eight stitches. That's number one. That's number two. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. One more time. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. This brings you up to 10 stitches. I'm just going to do mine without the marker because it's so small. That's three single crochets and then the next stitch obviously gets your increase. Do it one more time. And then one single crochet in each of these 10 stitches and then that's your beak. So you can fasten off and make your second one. One of them is going to need a sewing tail. We're going to whip, actually both of them are going to need one. We're going to whip stitch them closed and then we're going to sew the two ends onto the face but together. <laughs> Does that make sense? 
So make your other piece. I'll put the pattern on the screen. So when you've got both of yours, we're going to whip stitch these. So I'll whip stitch these clothes by going stitch for stitch all the way across. Now you don't have to sew them together. I'm going to leave that long tail for sewing. So sew these together, whip stitch these together, it's just easier to sew them on if they're whip stitched together. You could have done it all at the same time. But if you got bad hands like me, doing it like this is a lot easier. Oh, I wanted to weave that in. So I'm just going to weave. It's pretty tight in there. So I think you just have to do it once. Just make sure you're not going straight straight through. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to lose my voice. So uh, we're not going to sew it on quite yet. We're going to um, do our eyes first, but your beak will go here and this humped up part because your eyes come down from here to here to this. Your eyes will sit in this crook in this divot here and then your beak sits sits on here like that so you can almost see Tweety Bird can't you so let's do the tail quick and then um, we can put this guy together so get your yellow so with your yellow you're gonna start with a magic ring of four single crochets <laughs> These tiny little starts. But again, we want a point, so. Just don't pull your magic ring too completely tight. It's easier to kind of pop around and get into your stitches. You're just going to put one single crochet in each of these four stitches. Now I'm not using my marker because I know where my stitches are, but if you're still, you know, a beginner and you're not quite sure, I would use your marker just to be certain. Again, I'm going to push this closed and make a knot so it doesn't pop open. And then we can wiggle this around. It sure is small. 
your next round is going to be an increased round, so thankfully it'll get a little bigger. <laughs> I know, it's difficult. Your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase. So that's one single crochet. Too small to use my marker. And then my increase of two single crochets in the same space. And one more time. Oops. One single crochet. And an increase. Just try to keep your finger in there. We can make it pointy after. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. That's number one. That's number two. And then your increase. This brings you up to eight stitches. We only do it twice, so you're only increasing by two every round. So do it again. Two single crochets. And an increase. So now we can make it pointy. You get to see what it's going to look like a little bit better. So now we're going to do three single crochets and an increase. This brings you up to ten stitches. You're going to do it twice. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. This of course brings you up to 12 stitches. Next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. So we can start using our marker if we want. Getting a little bit bigger now. Your next row is going to be six single crochets and an increase. So, I'm going to decrease now. I'm going to do a two single crochet decrease, and this brings you back down to 12 stitches. So, that's number one, number two, and then your decrease, whichever one you want to do. Next round is going to be one single crochets and a decrease. So bring you down to eight stitches. And your last round is going to be one single crochet in each stitch for eight stitches.
That's my eight stitches that I'm going to fasten off. I cinched it closed and you're going to need a sewing tail. So that's the little tail. So cinch this closed. So, that is our tiny wee little tail. All right, now that we've got it all built, <laughs> now we have to sew it all together. So, this is the tough part. The tough part for me. Now, this is difficult, this part here, because your body has a neck but your head is this great big gobby thing so this isn't as easy as you might think it is I have these really long needles that I use to help kind of hold it in place it's just getting it in place so that your neck you almost have to hold the head up into position to get the neck in the center it's quite difficult so I used a mattress stitch for this so a mattress stitch is basically grabbing from the bottom which I'm already attached to and grabbing a little bit of the head. So that's just to start. And then you're going to grab some body. We're going to go around twice, so don't worry. You don't have to pull this right away either. And then we're going to grab some head. I'm doing this upside down so hopefully you can see what I'm up to. And then you've got to turn it ever so slightly. I get the idea. So stay in close to start and then we can go around a second time but try to stay in the same area because you want this to be in the center but also going around a second time you get to fix whatever <laughs> whatever went wrong you can fix it It is harder to pull once you come back around, but I think I got out of what area I was supposed to be in. So I think mine may not be good. I'm going to pull mine now because I think I already screwed it up a little bit. Oh, well, maybe not. And it gives you an idea of what, where you are and what you're doing, I suppose. And this is a good hold. The mattress stitch. You won't find too much of a wobbly head with the mattress stitch. Now, I thought I was doing good sewing my other head on until I looked and then realized how off I had it. So that, hence the second round. The second round is always the fixer upper.
So I'm going to take this out. And I'm going to pull. And hopefully... Well, I didn't do too badly at all. This gets out of shape a bit, so you just got to pull it down. Yeah, that's not too bad at all. So I go around again, even though I, I'm pretty sure I'm in the middle. I'm going to go, actually, I think I do need to come over to the side a little bit this way. But I didn't do too, too badly. I suck at sewing, guys. That's why I make it a big deal about it. <laughs> So I'm going to go around a second time. You don't have to do this. This is not a requirement. This is just my personal preference. Again, just to fix anything that I see that's not correct. Like having to move this over a bit. When I come down here, because I know I have to pull this over a little bit, I am going to drop down from this row to this row and I'm going to go out from this row to this row and that'll help pull it over. So if you do have the problem that I have then go up a row and then out a row to pull it over to the position that you need it to be in. So now I just needed to do this little spot to pull it over so I can go back down to the row I was in before and come into the row I was in before and just continue around. Now I am going to pull it to make sure I am getting it right. Yeah, I think that worked. Pulled it over a bit. So I'm going to continue and I will meet you back here when our head is done and we'll continue to sew the rest of the stuff on. So I'm just weaving at this point. So the arms get sewn on right up to his neck. Um, I sewed his arms on so that they still moved, but they get sewn on literally right up to his neck. And I don't really sew them on, so I'm going down in the middle and like the second row. It'll pop out on the other side. I'm going to grab enough to make a knot. And I'm going to weave down and over here. And grab my second arm. And with my second arm, I'm going to go in where my knot is, second row. I'm going to pop out just behind my other arm, just so I know they're in the same spot. I'm going to go up a row and go back out. So pull tight on your arms. And now with my arms, I'm going to meet up. I'm going to cut some of this off because it's too long. So I'm going to meet up in the same space with these two. And again, I just want to pull on these to make sure that they're tight, but I don't, I want them to still move. So that's why I'm sewing them on like this. And now I'm going to tie 
these in a knot and weave them away. So these legs, I sewed on open, but if you wanted to cinch this closed and then mattress stitch them, you can do that, but I just sewed my on open. The reason I didn't choose the mattress stitch is because it wouldn't have been floppy. It would have been, it would have been a really good hole, but it wouldn't have been floppy. So I kind of wanted the floppy leg just because, you know, kids will want to have this guy sit down or not that he wouldn't be able to sit, but it would be a lot stiffer. So again, I just go around a second time just making sure all my stitches are good just because I'm not a sewer and I suck. So once I'm satisfied, I'm going to pop out here because I am going to meet up with my other leg and join them together. So once you're done, if you wanted to, you can meet up into a stitch so that you tie your legs together on the inside. So while he's over like this, we can sew his tail on. So this is how I sewed his last one on. That it's literally sewed all the way up well not all the way up the side but the bottom around up this way and that's all that's left open just so his tail stays in place it doesn't have much of a tail but so i did let me turn it here how much room on my table so I did a mattress stitch. So I'll pull that a little bit and you see how it pops up. And that's why I kind of just, not doing a mattress stitch anymore. I just am doing sort of like a whip stitch just a couple of pieces up or a few to hold the tail in place and then I just kind of weaved over to here and put a couple of stitches in place And that's how I just did the tail. Easy peasy. All right, moving on. We're not sewing the beak on until after we do the face. So next thing you're going to need is some felt and some, uh, I use two weight cotton to do, um, his little tuft of hair. This is just a little two weight cotton. So if you got some of that or whatever you're going to use for this and we'll do all of this part. So you need white. You need a black marker too if you want to do this and it just highlights his eyes because that's what it looks like. <laughs> uh, blue and black and white. That's all you need for felt. And don't forget your hot glue gun if you're using hot glue for this, which I would suggest. Okay, so we're going to start with white. And we need 
need to make two of the same. I'm just going to cut a piece off. Be easier, to, maybe, to do it that way. Fold this in half so you can make two at the same time. And you're basically going to cut an arch like this. So the bottom stays square. And the top, oh. The top's arched. And then you just kind of make sure that it's a decent size for your guy because you gotta leave some top for your eyelids and stuff so just make sure so this part here is where the beak is going so the divot in his head here is how is where the eyes sit down on so you just have oh. Make sure that they're lined up with your body parts, too. That might be helpful. And then far enough apart so they don't look stupid. So I brought my eyes in close at the bottom, but I kind of go out a bit. Like that. So that looks like to be the right size. We're not going to build them here. We'll build them... And then we'll sew the whole thing on. But that looks like it's a decent size for me. So I'm good with that. So next we do the blue. I think I have to shape mine a little bit better. Mine are skinnier, way skinnier on the bottom. And they're also longer. So, I need to get another piece of blue because I didn't do those right. Let's get rid of that. Let's try this again. It's not the easiest thing to do. So I'm going to make it skinnier at the bottom. So I'm going to flare out like this. At least if you make it too big, you can come back and trim it. And then kind of flare back in to make my bottom smaller. Yeah, those are way too big. The black, again, is the same thing, just smaller. So, I want your glue gun is ready. So, anyway, once you get your eyes all glued, just need to really make sure that this, these eyes are going, this is sitting too low, but make sure your eyes
line it up with the legs. That's always the easiest thing to do. Is lining them up with the legs. That's still drying, but all I did was took a permanent marker and I started at the bottom and I just kind of worked my way along the edge. I did not mean to do that. And just up a bit and then I do the um, eyelashes, but I mean, you don't have to do any of this. So then I took some of this 2 weight cotton to do the eye lashes and um, the eyebrows I'll show you. So that's what we're doing with our eye, with the top of our eyes. So we need to put these eyebrows in as well. Now, as you can see, they're just teeny weeny, teeny weeny off to the side eyebrows. Teeny weeny. And then we're going to pop up here. So just like that. And then, now that we're at the top of the head, we're going to uh, do some of that. Or just make a series of loops, you know, with your fingers. Cut them. And then sew them in or crochet them in or do anything that you want to do. There's so many different ways that you can do this. And then just pull that through. You don't even need to make a knot. But you can do the hair any way you want. There's not much of it so it's completely up to you. I just need to put some little pieces of hair up there. So last but not least we get this beak sewn on. So once you determine, so I used my glue gun for the beak. Um, you can still sew it on if you want, but I wanted to, uh, I've decided I didn't want anything pulling on this, so I just glued it on. So... You gotta really make sure you're getting in. So I use fabric glue, glue sticks in my, in my gun. Well, there we have it. Our little guy, all done. 
I hope you liked him. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.